Welcome to the Advanced Flashlight Guide. This guide will teach you how to use the flashlight to its full potential against killers. This guide will involve three parts. The first part will involve fake blinding, so how forcing the killer to look away or how nearly blinding him can be beneficial and in which scenarios it should be used. The second part will involve using the flashlight against a few select killers in detail. Here are the nurse and the spirit as they have very unique mechanics. The third part will then involve using the flashlight against more universal killers, so how you can use their powers against them to get a blind in or make some plays. Now, I have to mention that a lot of these tricks relies on the killers making mistakes in the first place. However, keep in mind that a good player doesn't only play his own game well, but is also able to punish his opponent's mistakes should they occur. When you're trying to get a blind in, the killer will try and avoid the flashlight by naturally looking away. As the killer tries to swing, you move past him and avoid his hit. Keep in mind that this is meant as a last resort and is about as reliable as a 360. However, it's better to have some chance than no chance at all. The fake blind can be combined with dead heart to almost ensure that the killer will not see through your dead heart. Another trick you can do to increase the effectiveness of this trick is to lower the flashlight when a killer looks up into the air in order to avoid it. Then as they move the head down, you move the flashlight back up. The true power of fake blind becomes apparent when you combine it with a pallet. All you have to do is position yourself under a pallet and attempt to blind the killer. The killer now trying to avoid the flashlight can't see if you move past from the pallet or not, so they have to check a chance. This will almost always lead to free pallet stun. This is especially useful on longer loops when you can't make an additional loop or is forced to throw down the pallet anyway. So another thing you can try and do is combine the fake blind with windows. This is a lot more risky and you have to be very aware of your distance to the window. If not, you'll simply end up slow holding and getting hit. The nurse has four vulnerable moments during her gameplay in which you can blind her. The first one is when she's holding down her blink for longer periods of time. So that could be if she's camping someone, if she's patrolling, if she's basically being indecisive about her blinks. The second one is when she's charging her blink and blinking. The third one is in between blinks, so after the first blink. So she blinks and then she charges the second blink. And the fourth one is when she's being fatigued after blinking. So in this clip I'm being chased by a nurse and I see the nurse holding down a blink for a long amount of time. So I rush her to try and punish her being indecisive about her blinks. The nurse then responds to this by blinking into the ground which, some, which was something that was introduced in patch 1.9.0. Now when the nurse blinks into the ground she disappears but her model is still there which means she's vulnerable to being blinded. This is fairly reliable and hasn't actually failed me yet. Most nurses will not expect you to be so aggressive on them. The second vulnerable moment is when a nurse is about to blink. This is the hardest and the least likely to succeed. This requires a lot of timing, insight and a very precise aim. If you're off by just a millisecond, it will not work. It's very important that you start flashlighting the nurse a little bit before she's about to blink, otherwise it'll be too late. Again, this is meant as a last resort and I would even argue that doing a 360 is a lot better. The third vulnerable moment is when the nurse is mid blink. As the nurse is about to charge her second or third blink, you can try and blind her. This will usually result in one of three things. One, either the nurse blinks and takes the blind. Two, she turns around to avoid the flashlight and cancels the blink. Or three, she gets blinded and fatigues herself. All of these options are in your favor, some more than others. You should use this in open areas where it's easy to see where the nurse is going to land with her blinks. All you have to do is follow the red stain she leaves on the ground when she blinks. Then start flashlight on the location where the nurse is going to land. The fourth vulnerable moment is the one everyone is familiar with. After the nurse is done blinking, she gets fatigued and is vulnerable to getting blinded. However, most nurses are already battle hardened towards this 
and used to dealing with it. I would say try it out once or twice in the match, as most nurses will just turn around and you will waste the time blinding her while she recovers. The Spirit is currently one of the best killers for mind gaming in Dead by Daylight, not only due to her passive facing of still images, but also her recent buff to her facing. As long as survivors are within the Spirit's terror radius, they can't hear when the Spirit is choosing to face. The survivors often have to gamble in these situations, as they have nothing to go on. However, the flashlight can help you tell the difference between the real and the fake Spirit and much more. First, I'm going to dwell into the impact the flashlight actually has on the spirit. If the spirit gets blinded, her facing will end immediately. Her charge meter will not drop however. The spirit can hear the clicking of the flashlight and see a tiny circle that is close to the survivor but not exactly where the survivor stands. When you're in a situation where the spirit is trying to bait you with her power, simply try and blind her. If she gets blinded, it's the real one and you should run away or hide. If it is not the real one, then bolt the pallet into the fake spirit. Here are some examples showcasing these tips. Just like Freddy and the nurse, the spirit still has collision when facing, which means you can use the flashlight to detect where she is. Just be aware that you have a very tiny window to put this to use, so try and use it with dead hard or with pallets. I'm going to start with the Huntress, as she's a ranged killer who has to look at her target in order to hit it. The Doctor and Clown shares these features too. Although the Doctor can still look up and zap in the direction he's facing, unlike the Huntress and Clown, the fact that they have to look directly at the survivor while firing their abilities means that they're vulnerable to getting blinded. So, when you're facing the Huntress, you want to try and flash at her when she's about to throw her hatchets. In the beginning, you'll probably end up exchanging a blind for a hatchet hit, and that's completely fine. The Huntress often wants to try and throw her hatchets at pallets, windows, or even in the open if she's more confident. Always try and start the blind before the Huntress is going to throw her hatchets. It's very important when you attend the blind that you try and dodge in the opposite direction of where you're moving, as that is where the Huntress will throw her hatchets. So, here are some examples of this being used. So the clown essentially follows the same rules as the huntress. However, you will often end up blinding the clown after he has thrown a bottle, rather than before it. When a clown is thrown the bottle, he will look slightly towards the ground, which means it's easier to blind. This can obviously be counted if the clown is aware enough or skilled enough. However, most clowns will not expect this coming. The clown will often try to throw the bottle in the open to try and zone you out or gain ground on you. He will often be close enough in throwing the bottles that you can blind him. If the clown wants to hit you with his bottles, you will most likely have to take the blind unless he wants to walk straight up to you. The doctor is more or less the same as a huntress and clown. Although the doctor will often try and zap you before the pallet rather than at it, so you need to take this into account when facing him. Other than that, he is the exact same. When facing the hag, the normal thing to do is burn her traps, which is nothing wrong with. However, there's one more way you can use the hag's traps against her with a flashlight. This is not meant to be used in chases, 
as there's no time for it. It's merely a form of harassment. Simply go and pop a trap, if you know where there is one, and point the flashlight at the hack's duplicate. When the hack then teleports through a trap, she will have a flashlight ready and pointing at her. It's not that this cannot be dodged in time, but it's very unexpected. The downside is that you might end up using a lot of flashlight doing it. When facing Legion, it can be extremely hard to blind him due to his different and fast wall speed. If you want to blind Legion and Windows, you need to have the flashlight ready way ahead of time. I cannot recommend using Fake Blind against Legion because of its increased cooldown on attacks. So I hope by now you understand how to use these kind of techniques. The rest of the clips are gonna be about the remaining killers that I haven't managed to copy yet because the guide will simply be too long. I'm simply gonna show these clips and let them run in the background. Essentially, this is all about using the killer's power and animation against them. I have to stress that these tips can be countered, and killers often adapt over the course of the game the more you use them, especially the less reliable ones like the, the fake line for instance, because they're simply easier to deal with. I have tried to cover the more unusual techniques with a flashlight rather than just sticking with the regular ones. I hope this guide has also inspired you to go and try out new creative ways of using the flashlight. It has a lot of potential and a ton of hidden mechanics just waiting to be discovered.